A bleeding eye watches a small town. Welcome to World Send Gate. Hey folks, and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Joyful Ren Day, Mummer's Day, Rosanitsa Feast, Waitri Pantu, and, oh yeah, Yuletide. I'm Grimwit from NatchEvil.com, and this is Natchea News. The scary stuff first. It's not likely, but there's a small chance when YouTube changes the rules on how they approach copyright issues and networks, that mine and many other Let's Play channels will be pulled. Probably not, but you should be afraid anyhow. Hide, hide in your cellars, under sheets, and in the compost bins where the darkest of specters will not check. And that's as close as I can get to bad news, because fuck everything, I'm pretty happy. I'm sleeping again, my wife still loves me, the moon still hangs in the sky, even though it has seven eyes now, and I still get tens of views on YouTube mostly for X Beyond the Frontier vids. Weird. This here's the last of both Natchean News and Whirlsend videos for a good long while. The Natchevil comic will close down too. In fact, I'm finding myself with just one project left, and I won't talk about it for a bit. Well, maybe also some painful moon. To ease concern, Natch may be stopping, but I'm still trying to make a living through comics, so my art and my stories will continue. There's also a strong chance we'll return next year for more Whirlsend Gate, if not in radio form, then in comic form. I'm telling you guys, as bad as things are, I still consider myself lucky and in the upswing. Speaking of lucky, this last episode of Whirlsend? Yeah. Everyone wanted to come back for a part, and they all did awesome. Except for Z. Shun Z. Enough talk. Start the show. Whirlsend Gate, Episode 18, At the Gates of Whirlsend, by Mike Rojas. Special Guest Voices, Month, Evil Seedlet, The If of Dreams, Azriel, and Jet. July, 1918, The Wordless Hotel on Ravenlove Street. St. Peter was not himself, and John Davis knew it. The spirally-eyed elder gentleman was always a little strange, but also chipper. Not that day. That day he wilted over his front desk, silent and humbled. John had been on his way to his hotel room, but he had to stop and ask the old man. Jesus, Mr. Peter! What happened to you? Crying wounds underlined St. Peter's eyes that night. They... they... Took him. Who took who? What happened? St. Peter mopped his eyes with his sleeves. I can't do this no more. This damn town. This... He motioned at the lobby. Spearmint. Ah, I, I think I'll retire. Maybe grow bees or something. The room was silent for a moment. Then St. Peter asked, You want it? Want what? The hotel man. I don't much care to look at it no more. I... Huh? Sure. Here. Come round and I'll pull him out all the quirks. Wait, you can't just give me... Well, I don't want it. Listen, it takes care of itself, and it'll earn you money. You just gotta be mindful of what rooms do what. John Davis was wordless. When I say it takes care of itself, I ain't kidding. Just make sure no one goes into room 207. Anyways, you want it or not? Halloween night, 1921. City Hall at the end of Ravenlove Street, under an emerald moon. City Hall was mostly made of a huge circular ballroom, about 50 or so yards across, with a large opening held up by Greek pillars at the back. That way led to Toluca River, but the so-called mayor wasn't there. On the east and west side of the huge hall were offices, 
But the so-called mayor wasn't there either. He was at the huge double doors, standing on the marble steps and facing down a shadowy beast of Whirlsind with a smile. You're insane, the beast said from its seven mouths, while its necks and arms cricked like broken insect legs. Don't you know nothing? the mayor asked. They call me Sane Peter. He offered the beast a jug of moonshine, and you and I are going to have a talk. It, the shadow, grinned and screamed and despaired and grinned some more. I like you, Saint Peter. What, what shall we discuss on this sacred night? Nothing much. I just need a list of all your weaknesses. Fool! The shadows blazed. Behind fear was rage that swung a thousand knives, and an army of lewd creatures fell and was quickly eaten by thunderous hunger. Do not provoke me, Saint Peter. Fear screamed in seven voices, or you shall feel the destruction at the limbs of all beasts. The mayor chuckled. Oh yeah? He threw the jug, shattering it in front of the shadow's dress. Then St. Peter struck a match and tossed it, setting the steps of City Hall ablaze. Prove it! Winter Solstice, 1921 at the back of City Hall. Beat it, will you? John Davis was not in the mood. He and Trevor Clever were pushing a heavy and complicated device, the size of a small car, up the north steps of City Hall. The huge room was buzzing with activity. Echoes of laughter and inane conversation bounced off the decorative dome as the Farmer's Band, a group of musicians, were setting up their instruments on stage. Behind the stage, of course, the complicated device bumped. Careful with that, Felix Gregerson said. You'll jostle the roach murderer! Alion Gugoth stood unmoved, arms crossed, next to John Davis, who was starting to sweat. We had a bargain, Mr. Davis, said Alion. I have your play, and you have a monster, too. Yeah, yeah, Davis said under considerable strain. Look, I'm not going to be the one that kills her. Just leave me alone. At his last words, Trevor and John pushed the machine, finally, upon the flat surface of the hall floor. The machine rolled quietly behind a stage the mayor erected the previous night. No one wants her dead. That much I know. She's a monster, Aldeon said. I will not have monsters coming and going as they please on my property. I thought you liked her. I do, but that's not the point. Aldeon and John bickered some more while Trevor put on his white jacket and smoothed it flat. Now, C, where are you? Trevor asked. Over here, Mr. C. Nelsie was in her shortest dress, turning heads and carrying two wine flutes behind the stage. I got you some kick. It's the illegal kind, don't you know? Also, I don't think its color exists. Kind of a gray or blue or unholy pink. I'm not really sure. Nels, darling, do you have a mirror? I think one of my hairs is out of place. Ah, uh, you look fine, Mr. C. Felix leaned from one side of the complicated machine and yelled, Any of you lot have a roach? Some of mine escaped during transport. Nelsie, after handing a bag of live roaches to Felix, was pushed out of the way by John. He was pulling his cotton-wrapped repeater over his shoulder. Well, no, you can't have the rifle back. Davis walked quickly to the front of the stage with Aldeon on his trail. Do you know how much it cost me to enchant this thing? Really? Aldeon grabbed a flute of uncolored punch from one of the tables. What does my rifle do now? It kills with a heartbreak, I think, Davis said. Then he stopped and turned on Aldeon. Your rifle? I don't think so. This one's mine now. It certainly is not. It came with the house, and the house belongs to me. Service is rendered, Mr. Gogoth. I've at least given you the history of the wolf. And I've at least discovered she's harmless. This rifle is mine. And so the two argued until the mayor jumped onto the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll find the sun is setting, and it's time to get this shindig a-going. Yeehaw! 
There were cheers from the townsfolk as the farmer's band beckoned dance, like the green moon to howls. The mood of the crowd was a jovial one, even as the front doors were knocked inwards off their hinges and the screams of damned souls followed them. The perpetrator of door destruction was a stranger in an automobile, rubbing his head after it slammed into the steering wheel. Melody Redmarch jumped out and ran to the mayor, still on stage. Then David Mitch Marshall stuck his head out of the stranger's car and yelled, We're all going to die! Ten minutes previous, the entrance to town. Well, I'll be. It's just a normal sign. Peter Schold wrote something down in his diary and carefully folded the pages shut. His car was still putt-putt-putting in front of the town sign. He had expected the wooden stone to instead be of rubbery flesh or perhaps brimstone. Heck, word at the office told him the sign was painted some sort of color unseen by man in his darkest of nightmares, which was the color of the punch, by the by. It was a wooden sign with stone statues at opposite ends, the left being a lighthouse and the right being a cabin. The words on the sign read, Welcome to Whirlson Gate, the grave post of the world. It's just as well, I guess, Schultz said. I suppose the mind-numbing terror of the town comes later. The man lit a cigarette and put his matches away. If the town's taking it slow, then so will I. He drove the car onwards. Meanwhile, at the church of St. Faustina, David Mitch Marshall was combing his hair back. I, I can't tell you how much it means to me, Miss Redmark. He practiced. I, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me, Miss Redmark. Mm. Mm. David studied himself in the bathroom mirror. Melody knocked on the door and yelled, It's almost sundown, David. A flyer slipped under the door. It was the same invitation everyone in town had received, calling all to attend the first ever solstice bash held by the mayor. Failure to attend, it said, would result in being burned alive in shadows. It also said the bash would begin at sundown. We don't have much time. Hurry up. Calm down, David Mitch Marshall told himself. You're not asking her out, just escorting her. Yes! said a smiling shadow that hung behind David Mitch at all times. We can cut her later at the ball, where there are more witnesses. Quiet, did the David Rich Marshall. It's the best of event I've been to all year. My tailor and I could hardly stay at the Harvest Festival once the eating started. Melody knocked louder on the bathroom door. The sun is setting. Let's go. Almost done, Miss Redmark. David squinted as he put the finishing touches on his red ribbon tie. He smoothed his hair and smiled. Perfect. Even better than t Trevor, if I do say so myself. David's smile remained until he opened the bathroom door. There on the other side was a strangled woman with short hair in a purple dress. Her eyes rolled back and bloodshot and her mouth muttered and choked up blood. She hissed the word HATE over and over again. David sputtered backwards and fell onto the toilet. Nina! The sun had finished setting behind Peter Schold as he drove north on Ravenlove Street. He didn't find it odd that the sun should be setting to the south. In fact, he was delighted that Whirlson Gate had finally showed some originality. Who could they be, I wonder? Schold said aloud, pulling his car to the side of the road. Out of the church ran two people, a worried-looking man with a red ribbon tie, and he pulled behind him a young girl in a yellow dress whose face was completely wrapped by blood-stained bandages. Schold stuck his head out the window and yelled, Need a ride, friends? David, you moron! The bandaged girl yelled. Don't run from the children! It's a sin! The man wasn't listening. 
He quickly opened Schuld's rear car door and shoved Melody inside. It's a sin! She yelled again. As David jumped into the passenger seat, Schuld asked, Where to? Anywhere b but here, David Mitch Marshall said. Oh? Why's that? David answered by pointing at the church, which had all manner of deformed beasts giving chase. Most of them were inverted meat bags of flesh with strangled faces and bones reaching out to grip each other's necks. Oh. Schuld pulled a couple of levers and stamped hard on the fuel pedal. As the car sped away, he introduced himself. I'm Agent Peter Schuld with the NSBLE. Hello. Melody turned to look out the back window. Great, now you're making me run for my children. Gosh darn it, David! Her words stuck in her throat. M Mr. Schuld? She muttered. Can this go any faster? Behind them wasn't just the children of Melody and David Mitch Marshall. Out from the trailing army of flesh, bone, and blood rose a shadow with insect faces that bled onto the sky like running ink. Its seven mouths smiled. Schuld's brow went up. And I thought this town was going to be boring. To think I almost hesitated. He searched for new speed from his automobile. Who's in charge of this place? David shut his eyes tight. C City Hall. The, the mayor will be there, along with everyone else. Is that City Hall? Melody looked over the agent's shoulder. Uh, yes. Wait, what are you... No! The car bumped up the marble steps and crashed into the front doors, knocking them off their hinges. Melody ran up to the mayor, who was on stage with the band and showing off his best jig. The farmer's band, used to whirlsend antics, did not stop playing, even when the car crashed. Mr. Peter! Melody yelled. Mayor! We're all going to die! Screamed David Mitch Marshall. Hey? The mayor jigged his way up to Melody. What's that? Melody tugged on the mayor's pant legs. Mayor, there's a huge horde coming our way. Holy smokes, it's bigger than I've ever seen. Oh, well, that'll just be one of the beasts. The mayor waved it off, but kept dancing. Which one was it? The angry fella? Someone screamed from the front of the hall. The marching noise of monsters was uneven, almost like a low-pitched static, as feet and meat thudded on the roads outside, climbing up Ravenlove Street. More screams and the band stopped, looking up through the front doors. The opening seemed tiny from the stage, but they felt it, the uneasy dread of a whirlwind beast. It was like the Harvest Festival a few months back, St. Peter squinted at the distant army. Oh, it's her. What in blazes? Felix Gregerson peeked outside. That's the beast of fear out there! Who was it that ran away? His eyes narrowed towards David Mitch Marshall. Never mind. I can guess. Now, now, it don't matter much, the mayor said. Here's as good a time as any to tell everyone that I'm running for mayor. Uh, mayor, I do not think this is the right time. Trevor offered. What with the crawling horror outside? Of course it is. The mayor stood up straight and addressed the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, as your mayor, I propose we all calm down. Someone ran, sure, but running ain't going to help any more than it already has. Now, who's got a gun? Schuld raised a finger to point out, I doubt it's common practice for celebrations to include firearms. As if to answer him, a hundred clicks from a hundred guns, rifles, and machine pistols rung in the air. Huh. Well, that's settled, the mayor said. I know none of y'all actually called me mayor and meant it, but I aim to fix that. As of tonight, I want to be your official mayor. Signed and everything. I even sent a letter to Knox State Government, and they offered help. I'm sure that'll arrive any moment. Agent Schuld raised his hand above the many guns, a task he found difficult. That would be me, Mr. Mayor, he yelled. Ah! St. Peter stroked his beard. They sent one of you, huh? Well, anyway, as my platform, I aim to defeat all these beasties that run amok in our peaceful community. That's impossible, Davis yelled. 
Everyone knows the four beasts of Whirlson can't be killed. Why not? One of them's been killed already. What? But David Mitch chimed in. The world is ending. Isn't that why we're all here? To watch the world end? Much of the town gave nods and murmurs of agreement. Well, yeah, St. Peter said. Everyone knows the world's ending. That's what the town name means. The world sinned. The world's end. He scratched his head, covering the stage with dandruff and undead fleas. But the world's been ending, if you get my meaning. Ever since it's been born, the world's been dying. Does that mean y'all should just give up and accept it? Just fade out with the candlelight? He stamped his foot hard on the stage. I won't have it. I'd rather dance in my deathbed while the world burns around me. And if and all y'all don't want to join me, then tell me why y'all haven't ate your bullets yet. Mayor, John Davis said, unwrapping his rifle, the beast is here. All the townspeople pulled away from the front door, forming an ever-widening semicircle of gun barrels pointing outside. Ah, oh, relax, the mayor said. They can't even get in here. That's why I told Felix to bring his machine. How's that? Felix asked. You want to do what with my device? It shows the ether, right? That's what I'm told. Of course it does. What else would it do? Turn it on. As Felix spun around to the other side of the hall, Trevor joined the mayor on stage. What are you planning? Don't know why none of y'all haven't noticed. St. Peter called out to the crowd. All of y'all that were born in this town, raise your hands. About half the town did so, including Melody Redmarch, Dr. Sutton and his daughter, and the mayor himself. And how many of y'all helped fix a building after an attack? All hands that were up, stayed up. And how many of y'all have ever seen City Hall receive so much as a dent? All the guns and hands dropped. The townsfolk looked at each other in confusion. Soon after the mayor's question, Felix yelled from behind the stage, Behold! The power of the Gregerson device! Must you always do that? Trevor asked. Just turn it on. So Felix did. And what followed was a loud screaming hum from the clanking and churning machine. Outside in the night, thousands of floating horrors and mixed up blobs of giant microbes glorped and danced like floating teeth. But inside, the air was clear. I don't understand, Felix said. Some of the children monsters flopped through the front door, bathed in pink or orange gibbering cells. Once across the threshold, however, the meaty monsters slumped forward and dissolved, dripping upwards as if made of water with insect wings. A huge black eye suddenly dominated the doorway, blocking other children from entering. It was three-lobed and spoke with seven voices. I knew you figured it out, St. Peter. St. Peter yelled, all those in favor of making me your mayor, official lack, say aye. Aye. aye! aye! Went the town. Excellent. The mayor pulled out his own pistol. How about my first act be we gun down that there beast of fear? Oh, that's a bad idea, John Davis said. However, no one could hear him over the gunfire. After the smoke cleared and the ringing in everyone's ears settled, the only sound left was the laughing of seven voices. The eye was still there, shuddering with unholy giggling. Then its iris opened like a cat's eye, widening into a blue, dark tunnel. I knew you figured it out, so I made something for you. Newly elected Mayor St. Peter. Call it a gift. Out from the navy-colored ink, a mixed-up pile of tight meat fell into the hall. From it, the blorbed ghastly microbes, as were outside, bubbled around the thing. It ripped its skinless face off the floor and screamed, Daddy! For the first time that night, St. Peter wilted as he did over the hotel desk so long ago.
His shaky hand dropped the pistol and stroked his beard as he shook his head slowly. The gun and his heart fell with a thud. It hurts, Daddy! It's, it's not real, said the mayor. It can't be! Who is it? Trevor asked. Does it matter? answered John Davis. It's in the hall! Kill it! Another volley of bullets lodged into the meat of the grotesque thing crawling from the doorway. Except for marks left like polka dots on the flopping muscles, the thing crawled on as if unharmed. The crowd pulled away, lining the edge of the great circular hall and letting it pass. Some reloaded and continued firing. Others holstered their weapons, realizing the vanity of attack. Amazing, Felix said. He pulled out a set of opera glasses to get a better look through his eye sockets. That thing must be concentrated aether, like compressing iron into a dense cannonball. That must be why it can survive. K kill it! The mayor fell to his knees. His eyes were uncharacteristically red. He looked to Trevor and said, K Kill it! Please! He looked at John Davis, who had backed up to the stage, and said, Please, you gotta kill it. He suffered so much. John Davis looked around to Jebediah Termite. The old wizard nodded from one side of the room. How many times can I use this thing? Jeb held up one finger. Aldeon, looks like you can have your rifle back. John raised his gun and took careful aim. It flopped, it muttered, it screamed. Daddy, it hurts so much. After the shot rang out, it cried itself to death. Halloween Night, 1921. City Hall again. Insect legs and five hundred mouths bit at the doors of City Hall. St. Peter giggled. If you're so stuck on killing me, how come y'all can't come in? Screams of terror vibrated the door. Seems like y'all can't do nothing to this here hall. Well, ain't that a shame? The mayor stroked his beard in calm thought, despite the terror at the marble steps. Ain't that a shame? He whispered. I, I have, have your son. Fear screamed. Its voices was disgusting with malice. And, and his fishes shall dance on hook, St. Peter. I have your son. Oh, I know, the mayor muttered. I know. If you liked Worldson Gate or Natchian News, hit like, share, subscribe, or just send an email to natchevil at gmail.com, as seen here. There's also a link below if you're bad enough dude to donate. Every dollar will surprise me because no one even knows what the donate page looks like or how dangerous it is. In fact, this one kid clicked on the donate page and the very next week got chlamydia. Woof. Okay, super thanks goes to Month, Goss Goss, Jet, The If of Dreams, Sarinto, Azriel, Aximil, Black Kitty, Duckling, and, of course, the reliable Evil Seedlet, who has her own YouTube channel. So many thank yous to Kevin McLeod, who unknowingly scored the whole show. Check out his website, Incompetech.com. Also, fancy 1920s music came from archive.org. For Seedlet, McLeod, or old-timey music, check out the description below. Also, if you haven't noticed, there is a link to the Whirlsend comic below as well. It's been a fun and weird set of months, and I wish you guys, all of YouTubes, the best and nothing but fun. Peace! Look at this. Look at this. I'm only at the 14 minute mark. I'm editing this. I'm only at 14 minutes. It's been two and a half hours. And so, until next year, my ignorant listeners, this has been... The Memoirs of Felix Gregerson. <laughs>